episode 294 of the Global From Asia podcast. Welcome to the Global From Asia podcast, where the daunting process of running an international business is broken down into straight up actionable advice. And now your host, Michael Michelini. All right. I hope everybody's having a great day. I am on a six or seven hour bus ride to Baguio City in the Philippines. I'm going to do a little workshop uh, this Friday the 21st for e-commerce sellers to learn how to do some sourcing strategies. I will say China, but it could be anywhere in the world really, dealing with factories. Um, At least in my experience over the 10, 15 years I've been doing it is being extra clear and doing your research making good specs so i'll be doing a three-hour workshop with uh with some cool local filipino entrepreneurs i'm really excited about this and this week's show is another one is oh yeah and i feel like we got really a lot of great great guests these days carlos alvarez the wizard of amazon i met him in miami he's he's down in south florida he does amazing meetups i went to one of his meetups a couple of years ago when i was visiting my family in florida and this guy really has so much knowledge so much experience and uh it got i felt i got a little bit emotional in this one i mean he's talking about the ups and downs of his experiences um starting his e-commerce business getting ripped off from a I don't know if it's a factory or just uh, some kind of scumbag, but he talks about that. He gives some insights about launching, some the old days versus today's days of e-commerce. And um, it's a really fascinating one. And thank you all for the messages. It's been an intense, intense month for me with this whole coronavirus. Um, we're working on a massive write-up, roundup from others in the community as well for the blog. But... We just got to do what we got to do, right? Um, but anyway, I don't want to take up too much of this time. I'll talk about it in a blah, blah, blah session if you want to hear some of the updates of my coronavirus epidemic uh, situation or other things happening in, in life and business while I do this bus ride into Baguio. I mean, we're in this huge 40, pers- 40 passenger bus in these windy little roads in the mountains of the North Philippines pretty wild all right let's let's jump into this amazing interview with carlos it's, it's great talking about his journey his story and some really good insights for sellers so I, I hope you guys enjoy i know i did do you enjoy these podcasts and things that are happening in the community here and you want to get back get back even more involved with what's happening connect with me and others in the community as well as private members calls a, a whole library of courses private events meetups masterminds and more GFAVIP.com is a huge initiative we've been working on actually for many years, but we're making an even bigger push in 2020. And we've gotten great feedback from our members, and we want to give back to those that want to contribute to what we're doing. GFAVIP.com to learn more, as well as sign up and apply today. Hope to see you on the inside. So, thank you, everybody, for tuning to another Global from Asia podcast. This one's, uh, I mean, man, it's, he's been on my list for a while. I'm, I'm had, I'm so happy we've, uh, we've gotten this to happen. Carlos Alvarez down in Wizards of Amazon podcast and community in Miami, Florida. Thanks so much for coming on, Carlos. What's up, man? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> What's up? Here. You're part of the inspiration. I started a podcast, so wow. this is just nice. Wow, there we go, man. Full circle here. I had a show. It's really cool, man. Uh, yeah, you've been doing great with your events. I, I, I'm on your uh, Eventbrite our meetup list, and I get the updates, and I see your, your posts on social. You guys have been growing like crazy. I mean, how many meetups are you doing now? I, Six, 16 events per month. That's uh, five of them are in Spanish. I mean, it's in Miami. Yeah. And they're relatively new, so I think we can double our group size just in Spanish, but... Our, our English group, obviously the bigger one, is 11 events per month, and we are we are the largest Amazon seller meetup group in the world. Yeah, I would say, man. And uh, even when I was there, oh, man, it's like two or three years now. I can't, can't believe time is flying, but yeah. I think last time you came, there was an issue, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, like wifey had an issue coming in or something, and yeah. we were all struggling. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah, immigration we were at Bonsai is... eating afterwards, talking. Yeah, yeah it was crazy. we were hanging on the pillows, and I think my uh, sister-in-law was there <laughs> sleeping. <Yes. laughs> my dad, <laughs> yeah, and my kids. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, well, man. Next time you're in sunny Miami, you definitely got to give me a heads up because I want you to present. I want to share. I want to share. Definitely, for sure. I, I got to get back. That's where my the fam's not far, so for sure. So, so yeah, so it's great to get you on here. And we will... Um, we we got so much to cover. Honestly, there's just so much to talk about. But um, maybe first, a little bit of introduction about about yourself and and how you how you got started online. Um, sure. I I don't have any specialized education um, as far as you know finance or business edu- formal education or anything like that. I was a um, really as a kid just a just a troublemaker. Uh, I got into <laughs> all kinds of stuff and heading the wrong way fast is the best description there. And I, you know, fast forward into some of my later years, I, now we're talking about late 20s or very early 30s, I had this, I like to say I had this expensive Uh, ex-girlfriend, obviously felt I was in love at the time, and I just was trying to hold down a lot of jobs and get, you know, gifts, and I I was at, it's pretty pathetic, but that's where I was, and I, you know, no job was enough, I was working at Publix, delivering subs, um, just, I think, uh, yeah, selling cigars on the side wow. and, and then trying to get any odd hustle I could. If somebody had a truck to unload, like call me, you know, you had a degreaser in the middle of the night you need done. I'm there and anything <laughs> to get a few extra dollars to, you know, to buy some stuff or, uh, fake it, I guess you can say to make it look like I was doing better than what I was. And then that just wasn't enough. So I started selling on eBay. So okay. we're at maybe 15 plus years ago or something, yeah. something in that range. And I little by little, eBay was a lot different back then, but little by little, I was, you know, making more than my sub route. So I dropped the sub route, then Publix, then all these different jobs. So eventually I'm doing eBay full time. Friends and family obviously feel that I am not going to end up the way they kind of felt I was going to end up, which was bad. You know, maybe, you know, locked away for life or OD or something like that. Like I, I, I'm afraid they feared the worst. And then they pulled up some money, gave me some money to invest in my company um, the, the amount was like eighty, eighty one thousand dollars okay. I immediately, uh, I had discovered, I thought I was the only one that discovered Alibaba <laughs> at the time and I wasn't telling anybody and I had these like, um, they're adult novelties. Can I say what that is on the show? Like which sure, adult, like, sure. oh yeah, they were, they were, they were cock rings okay. and like <laughs> vibrating cock rings. I was getting for like 16 cents from, uh, the factory still around. They're amazing called pleasure chest okay. and my rep was named Elvis surreal. So, <laughs> 16 cents, I'm selling them for like 20 something dollars on eBay and they're flying. Amazing. So when I get all this money, I'm, I just go to the, I go to Elvis and I'm like, man, I, I want to get $81,000 of this stuff. And he said, well, be obvious. Like we don't have that in stock, but we'll, we'll do it. I, I didn't understand how that worked. And I thought that he was not taking me serious. Like what kind of factory doesn't have $81,000 of this stuff just lying around? <laughs> um, I mean, it makes sense now, but I instead went on Alibaba and found someone that was really ready to do business, and his name was Usman Sise, factory in Hong Kong that manufactured these things. And I sent him the money, and he stole everything from me. Oh, um, man. And then, you know, a quick Google search, you find that this is something that actually happens if you don't do your due diligence. And low point, I, I try to pivot from that. Not even pivot. I try to fake it to where my friends and family don't know that I lost their money. And mm. even then, they probably would have, you know, some of them would have probably thought, oh, he stole it from me. Or the other ones would have probably been like, you know, what did, what, what did we think? You know, we tried. But in the process of trying to get some capital again to keep going and selling, I went to go sell two of my reptiles. Uh, a bunch of things were happening, but this is the one that most people, I guess, <laughs> like hearing the most of this story. But I, I, I go to sell two of my reptiles and some people in front of me. Um, you know, they're checking out and one person was buying, uh, paying like 25 bucks for 50 live worms. And <laughs> I remember thinking like, I will dig for these things. I'm a hard worker. Uh, I wind up breeding them. I find an article that, that talks about how zoos could save money with the herpetology department if they bred them. And I actually bred them. Uh, eventually, you know, I need to get it out of my house. You know, code enforcement's getting on my case. My ex that had enough. She's gone. And fast forward, and I wind up sell about 10 months working 90 hours a week, sleeping on the warehouse floor. I wind up getting approached and sell the company for $2.6 million, um, selling live insects on Amazon and eBay. Obviously, merchant fulfilled. But <laughs> the uh, during that time, I was also 
Um, I, I needed some kind of money to survive because even though that business was bringing in a lot of money, I needed to constantly invest in infrastructure for that, like uh, equipment to sort, um, extra bins to grow, uh, certifications or licenses that are needed. And I was dabbling with, I guess, what we call arbitrage now. And um, that eventually graduated into into wholesale. Okay. Okay. Fascinating, man. There's a lot to that story. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, eBay, it seems like eBay was the start, yeah, for a lot of people's <laughs> stories. I mean, uh, myself included, I, eBay was the, the gateway for e-commerce and to... The, a lot is and it kind of leads into the next next question or next point is, I mean back then you know the margins and uh, the the whole the, the whole state of e-commerce is so much different, right? I mean I don't know I, that this question could be a whole show by itself, but uh, you know I think what I want to talk about today is just kind of like some unique product launch ideas in today's world, you know, a review strategies, and of course we already talked about your events, but. Um, you know, just give us some, give some people some creativity. Cause I think basically when we try, unless you don't agree with me, I think it's much more competitive now or not. I mean, I guess it's always too late to sell online, no, I, but it's, I, I, there's still there's time, right? Yeah. There's definitely a lot more competition now, but I feel like that's balanced out or it's even greater skewed towards more opportunity. Mm. Uh, like uh, I forget how long you've been selling, but you know how impossible it felt oh, four, selling five, Canada yeah. when we first yeah. started? Like, connecting the dots just to selling yeah. Canada. Well, then. Impossible. Yeah, I mean, that's, FBA made it much, cut out a lot of the extra, all that logistics stuff, right? Like, I mean, you know, the nightmare inventory and the warehousing and, uh, yeah, like the import process and third party warehouses and integrating shopping carts with, with warehouses. And a lot of that's gotten cut out with. Uh, with Amazon. Right, so I think I think the opportunity is greater, but if you attempt to succeed in your business the way I attempted to, or when you attempted to X amount of years later, if you try to snapshot that and repeat it, yes, it is so much harder. There's so much more competition. But if you take advantage of things that are coming out daily, that I mean, just just recently, not so recently with one of them, but Amazon Live Video. Yep. What? I'm crushing it on Amazon Live Video. Um, Amazon Posts, this is something that I feel is going to really tip the scales towards uh, the importance of brands over over that 100 mile, you know, mile wide inch deep approach. Instead, you're going to need to niche down. So these things didn't exist when we um, yeah, began. Yeah. So the opportunities are greater. If you use them, fantastic. If you try to say, oh, I saw how such and such guru did this five years ago and I heard his story. So I'm going to repeat that. No, it's, it's pretty bad. Agree. Totally agree. So, so yeah, it's, it's true. So I'm sure people know Amazon, Amazon live, but do you want to maybe share some ways? Are you using that for launch or using that just, uh, for our, like, I try to bring, I try to bring everything but the kitchen. I mean, everything possible to bear in a launch. Um, the things I try never to touch for myself, is I'm not a fan of you know deep discount giveaways. Um, I'm not a fan of rebate after the fact, even though it works. I get it. <laughs> I'm just not. I'm personally not a fan of it. Um, and, and I am a fan of you know preparing for a launch months in advance prior to actually launching. Uh, so sort of the Pat Flynn will it fly approach. You know, mm. building my email list, testing my content. If yeah. I'm going to say, oh, yeah, Facebook ads are cool, can I efficiently target the audience that I want to use to launch? Um, and Amazon Live Video now is just one additional you know, weapon in the arsenal. And, and what's really working for us is low production quality video and using verbal search find buys. Mm. So let me break that down. So low... low uh video quality so like kind of looking more like genuine like user user generated phone tiktok yeah that's like yeah yeah literally i was just looking at pampers video on uh, on uh, the listings just for some reason i was just going through with somebody on the team and yeah they had really like user generated videos on their main product video of one of their main products 
just showing users using it, not just not some high high production quality video right in a studio. So yeah, it's definitely working a lot better, and we've tested it. I mean, we never sat down and said let's create a whole bunch of good stuff and a whole bunch of bad stuff, but in the process of just trying a lot of things and looking back at at the data or, or the result of the video, speaking to Amazon Live Video, and the results are clearly in favor of you know just just open your phone and go. Don't even worry about a gimbal in most cases. Like, it's just open your phone and go, and the results are a million times better than if you don't. It makes me think of, uh, I had, I, I did, I did a talk once differences of Chinese and American e-commerce. And one I used to say, but maybe it's not true anymore is Chinese e-commerce. They trust really bad quality photos. Cause it mean, must mean you, so you really have it. Whereas if it's like, right. some hot, yeah. perf- they think if it's a really good quality photo, you just jacked it off the internet and stuck it on your, uh, on your listing. So they think the real uh, crappy one that you took with your phone is your, your photo of the actual product. But maybe it's even, I, I, never, I never looked at it like that, but that's, 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 that's crazy. Hey, that's it, true. Yes. China, China style, man. They don't believe it. It's all about it's, I guess everywhere is about trust, but Chinese, uh, especially, uh, they want to feel like it's really your, your product, but uh, and uh, sorry, if the second part, the second one, low quality, you know, like natural looking video. What was the second part? Um, the second, the second thing that I use with that sort of video is um, we used to call it treasure hunts. I, I think in the Amazon space now we're just calling it search find buys. Yeah, search but find buys. Yeah. You're not putting a, a clickable link <clears throat> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. video, so I, I'm calling it like a verbal search find yeah, by that's or what you got search it, find by IQ, letting them know um, here's a promo code. And maybe if you are using a little higher production, maybe like VMix or, or Telest- some, some of the Telestream products, Wirecast, uh, you could throw a promo code up on the screen that sits at the bottom, and the product that you're actually talking about in the video, instead of having it as a clickable link below, um, speaking about it and letting them know which search terms they could use to search for this yeah. product and accurately find it between page blank and blank. Uh, that's working really well. It's, it's, it's a good, it's, isn't it? It just seems like back to Gorilla Basics. Like you used to make these hyperlinks to make it easier, but now, you know, both of your, uh, both of your tips are like kind of like, I guess it's like people are going back to the old school. You know, they want to see oh, the they, real. They always do. <laughs> What's that? It seems like they always do. Yeah, I guess they always go back to the old school, but but yeah, I mean, you know, to look genuine, to look real, to look like you know, and then uh, yeah, and then actually have people search and scroll. Yeah, it's something I've we've we I've been to some meetups in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and other places, and they're also saying yeah, scroll, find me on page five between five and six, and then yeah, search this keyword, and then yeah, trying to trying to boost things up like that. It's uh. Yeah, the old-fashioned way. Because then, yeah, we don't want to even bring up super URL anymore, right? So yeah. I don't. Apparently, apparently, everyone still says, you know, they're still dancing around that. I remember, and I think when you when you first started selling, it was right around the time that a lot of people got in trouble for super URL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. apparently, if you call it a two-step URL, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's all good. I mean, everyone should play to their strengths and 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 do what's working for them. I think. Uh, for me, that's just right now, you know, live video posts, email marketing is alive and well for me, Facebook ads, um, reviews are not really an issue. And I think Amazon's making it easier. I'm not, I'm not in yeah. love with the Earth reviewer program, but now Vine rolling out for your, your seller central account. Um, and me being, I don't know if we're in agreement here, but me being 19, 17 to 21 reviews and I, I you know I really don't think much more about reviews after that mm. uh, I just work with the quality of my reviews so they do enough there and I can get enough in reviews in creative ways uh, so it's it's all good I mean that, using that has been and contests contest trivia and polls my, my my formula that's pretty much it yeah yeah, I mean, it's, I guess it's true once you get enough social proof, you know, once you get enough reviews. And then there's even these ratings now, not even text reviews. And then they're, they're globally merging. All the global reviews are now merged into the listings, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's definitely a lot of changes. I I think that they're making it where you just click, you know, you just rate it without text because you know the game. 
people are much more likely to leave a one star if they're angry than a five star if they're happy. You know, I mean, that's just the way it is from eBay, Amazon, you know, any platform pissed off people get a bad food at a restaurant. They're going to leave the Yelp review, you know, not the happy customers, you know, the happy. Right. Of course, there's happy ones that do it, but there's a lot of other happy ones that don't do it. So I think Amazon's probably making it easier to get those five star not without the heavy amount of text, you know, um, to try to offset those angry one star people. So, uh, oh, yeah. Have you been messing around any? I'm doing it and I'm seeing a much higher uh, result on getting reviews, mostly positive, from manually going in to the order section to the order. And now you can just click uh, ask for a review. Yeah. Um, that's working for us. Yeah, we've been doing it too. And then we haven't tried to. I mean, there's people talking in groups about the Chrome plugins that do it automatically, but we're still doing it with our hand, you know, our human. Yeah, I'm scared to touch it with the automatic automation. I know it's just scary. Um, another one we're talking. We're we're actually we're we're getting nervous about our because I, I don't know. I haven't really talked. I, I did the I did that brand uh, the coffee products and I merged it with a bigger group of sellers. Uh, and here in Manila, and uh, one thing is, um, we're getting scared of the inserts. We're really getting scared. We think, but I don't know how can Amazon really say no inserts, no websites on your packaging? Like I can't, they can't do that because I mean, if multi-channel sellers, you know. But we're getting a little well, bit website, paranoid about I think the websites on packaging is fine. I mean, I haven't heard. You've heard something that says you can't have websites on your packaging. Literally in a meeting today, one of the guys on our team, internal team, was saying he heard that is against TOS now. I'm like, that's bull, man. I mean, this is your product, you know? Like, yeah. how is Amazon going to say I, what I, think, I can put on my product package? I think it's the verbiage that goes with it. If it's go here to receive a rebate if you re- if you left yeah. you know, or and leave a picture of your review to get blank, I think that matters, but... I think everyone expects to see certain things on packaging, like the ingredients, who made it, where it's from, yeah. some contact, and, and that's a website. Exactly. Uh, I think, you know, if that website, you go to it, and the landing page, I mean, the, the only thing it is, is a way to get Amazon reviews and to game it, and Amazon was to look, then I think in that instance, it would be an issue. Agreed, um, agreed. But yeah, we're getting a little bit nervous with our, our uh, inserts, but... We never really asked straight up for five star reviews, but you know, of course, we try to say give us, uh, you know, your, your warranty or um, you know, um, join our community is the one I think I, I've used in some of the cards. Um, so there's some debate in our team even about phasing it out or not, but uh, it is getting. That's the thing, we, right? We face out anything on an insert or packaging that ask, even asks for a review, regardless of the verbiage. Even mm-hmm. though I know there's a lot of appropriate ways that you could ask, just because uh, right, right now there seems to be too much of a like too strong of a magnifying glass by Amazon on yeah. everything reviews. And when we stepped back and looked at it from what we can do on, from emails, from what we can do just reaching out on sites and sponsoring meetup events and shows and uh going on Yelp and finding high quality reviewers in our niche that we don't have an issue with getting reviews. Uh, now if we needed to get a thousand to fifteen hundred reviews per product and that was like what we thought was necessary, then yeah, I, I would have an issue, but we're good. We do amazing on a on a new product launch with you know getting that first twenty five to fifty reviews um relatively fast and I don't it doesn't have much of a negative impact on me. But yeah yeah, I think it's true. So, yeah, we're, we might start to even kind of tone that down, even though I don't think we're we're uh, messing with it too much, but we're thinking about toning that down. But um, um, thinking here, there's there's a few different directions we can go, but actually I kind of want to go back to your story, honestly, or maybe your journey. Cause, uh, sure, let's do it. Yeah, like um, let's go back to the – let's go back to the journey. So – so then, uh, can you maybe fast forward a little bit through? Um, yeah, I mean, I horribly got burned, burned by that guy in Hong Kong. Maybe we can go find him still. But 
Usman Cisse. Yeah, I've scoured the web for years looking for that person. I mean, not not. What am I going to do? Go all the way over to Asia and then get into a problem? No, but I mean, that was. I think that was just the testosterone in me. But mm. I'm, I'm. It was such an important lesson. I wish we could have done it another way. But where I'm at now, um, in my life, in my business, if that was the only way to have gotten here is to go through that, then I'd do it again. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it allowed me to. What would be equivalent to burning the boats? That was the. You ever heard the saying like? Yeah, you know, burn, like in yeah, the that, that, the war, like the Trojans or I don't know if it's Italy or they burned the boats when they would go to invade a new country because basically the general says well, you're not going home unless right. you win. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's all all in, win or nothing. Um, and I wouldn't give that same advice to somebody who's got a job and wants to start on Amazon. I wouldn't say quit your job, burn the boats. But in my case, that was. I didn't have a great deal of options, and fortunately, it worked out tremendously in my favor. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know what else on the journey you'd like. I mean, once we sold, well, the I mean, business, you, we kind of went fast through the live worms, and then you sold that multi-channel, and then sold it. Is that kind of that was what I called it? On, sold it on eBay and Amazon, Merchant Fulfilled. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm in. Uh, that's my largest. Uh, we did we did a little over we did a little over forty million in gross sales on live insects just last year, okay. and, and now I have five different brands. You know, in the in the cigar space, the wine accessory space, yeah, yeah, uh, live insects, uh, food. But once the non compete was over, I got back in it. Okay. Um, the well, we're actually in a similar space. Uh, coffee. Yeah, um, yeah. I remember we yeah, talked about uh, it. Yeah. So we. Um, I, that didn't immediately happen. I sold a bunch of brands that I started on Amazon once that one was sold, and I realized that the money I made from that, um, at the at the, the rate of my new lifestyle of living, <laughs> I broke within a year. So I needed to. I did really good way back when on the whiskey stones. I was like the second one to get in that when it came out, um, and, and I've done really good in the hair space and. I've just pivoted into a lot of different things, but during that time, reinvesting all my profits into the business, I, I made a ton of mistakes. You know, with mm -hmm. business partners. I mean, I have a ton of business partners to this day. Yeah, um, I feel like you I, and I have some similar uh, hustles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, I got into wholesale a lot. I once I sold that business, I built another one. To I, I think it was. I hate getting into numbers, but in this case, it's really just. To, to emphasize how they mean nothing. And that is, we, we got to like 14, between 14, 16 million in a wholesale business, and, and I couldn't even put gas in my car. Man. I, I, like, we were so upside down on cash flow and important things in the business that uh, it was just crazy. So, I mean, fortunately, we, all, all those really bad things, I'm glad we got them out of the way. Um, and, and then here we are, fast forward a, a whole bunch of years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess, you know, we're getting towards a wrap up, um, but uh, just some ideas like of how you structure all these brands or these under one kind of entity, multiple partners. I mean, I'm just also curious, even, and I don't yeah, know, maybe you um, can share with the uh, list. A ton of partners. I'd say uh, at different businesses, rivaling close to 16 at a time. And I have uh, 13 or 14 seller accounts, a few of them are dormant. So I don't know the exact number. And when I when I first got into it, I ran everything under one account, but I got suspended in the yeah. very way towards the beginning. I know. And that's another thing to throw back to the beginning of the episode. It's a lot easier to get unsuspended now than it was then. There was mm. no recourse. There was no Amazon lawyers. Mm. Um, I would have paid fifty thousand <laughs> to get unsuspended back then, and now it's a few thousand bucks. But the I realized that I didn't want to put everything in one basket, so I thought getting different accounts would help. So as I as I had businesses that were that sold products that were very conflicting, like adult novelties with baby toys, with coffee, with live insects, I would get permission from Amazon to open up these other accounts, which is now you know 13, 14 seller accounts with Amazon's blessing, you know four or five vendor central accounts. Um, we're at uh, we're at 81 domestic employees, 242 virtual assistants. Amazing. Uh, so it's 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 turned into something really big. Uh, I separate the businesses though to get to your exact question by different accounts and different businesses now, just because I learned in selling a business that the ease of transferability it plays a really 
important role in the selling of the business. That's not to say if you have everything run under one that you can't sell it. I'm not saying that, but I found that it becomes significantly easier if everything has its own account. Agreed. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, so we have, I'm a partner at Alpha Rock and uh, we have, uh, we we're actually raised, we raise money and we have, uh, but we have about, I think eight seller accounts. And then, yeah, we try to per brand unless, but we also look at it by revenue too. So if it's too much, we kind of want to diversify revenue, but we usually want to keep one brand, but sometimes we'll put a few smaller brands under one and then sometimes we'll split it off. But, sure. uh, but yeah, I think uh, somewhat similar, but we are torn about sep- there's people I want to just own one brand, but we don't want to do that because we don't want to compete internally with our team. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And our resources. So if we have everybody, the owners are at the one top level, you can be less uh, emotional about which brand's performance because there's not right. like competing yeah. investors or partners on different brands for resources, I guess. Oh, well, that makes sense. Well, no, you'd know best. I, I, I did well, I it just by, I, I guess, I, failing forward. Yeah, I so know. Like, I hear you, man. I'm just uh, my resources. Like my virtual assistants and my resources and my team is under one separate business. And all the businesses that use them, they are hiring them per se. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Awesome, man. And uh, this has been a fascinating conversation. And um, what are, I mean, of course people can, you know, you got your podcast, Wizard Wizards of Amazon, and your events in Miami. Uh what are uh, how can people find that or other things that you're doing and and uh, you know what what are, what are some things people can can follow or get involved with that you're up to? Yeah, I mean, I would love. I mean, my, you know, I've had a lot of inspiration, and your your podcast was one of the inspirations for me starting a podcast. So, <laughs> awesome, I mean, man. anybody that's listening to this that that liked anything I said, Wizard, if they jump over and give me a listen on Wizards of Amazon yeah, podcast, sure. that would be huge. I put my phone number out there and I do it here, 305-902-1283. Like I pick it up and I reply to text. Oh, text wow. is probably easier. Amazing. Um, I, you know, Wizards of Amazon on Facebook, Wizards of Amazon Facebook group, uh, Instagram. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, I, I started one. It's not for another year, but I, I started an event called Online Seller Cruise. We Whoa. just got back from it. You're actually on my list to get to go on the cruise. Honestly, next you're year. on my list oh. for uh, <laughs> some <laughs> event. <laughs> Too, man. Yeah, I'd love to make it. Uh-uh. Chris Davey was just uh, at, at this one on Online Seller Crew. It was pretty, pretty wild. Like, man, your name came up a few times. It was, yeah, it was yeah. Good. I saw photos of him with Cindy. That's really great. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So that, those are the easy, that's pretty much every way to reach me. Phone number, social media, everything. And um, if you have any questions, just just, just ask. Okay, I sure. Just, I do. I love talking about it. Yeah, I mean, you're really the most social guy. I mean, yes, yeah, we connected uh, on your events and uh, – and uh, all the amazing community things you, you do. So I really, I think everybody, thank, I thank you on behalf of everybody for what you do for the community. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll get this all up and I'll try to link as much as I can in the show notes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think that that's, that's, a, that's a wrap, man. Thanks so much for sharing, buddy. I can check this off my bucket list now. I got, I'm yeah, going to your dude, pocket. checked. I can just retire now. <laughs> it's all the, hang up the hat. You're that's on it. the show. <laughs> The highlight of my year, as well as many people that are listening to this show and in the community, is our Cross Border Summit. Can you believe it's our fifth annual this year in 2020? We picked November 19th and 20th, 2020, in Chiang Mai, Thailand this time, moving it out of mainland China. Seems like uh, everything is moving out of China lately. We've been getting amazing speakers lined up, amazing people, amazing venue. It's a highlight of my life, <laughs> seriously, all these different ones, and I hope to see some of you there. If you're interested to learn more, crossbordersummit.com slash Thailand. And of course, our GFA VIP members get first priority and access. All right, I'm at 2% battery life. I took the back row of the bus. I don't know. Well, I don't know if you guys do choose the front or the back in your bus rides. They let you choose here. I bought it online, even Victory Liner, not bad. And uh, stuck on a mountain. I can't believe this bus can go up this steep of a hill. And I'm at 2% battery. I hope I don't lose this recording. It's the blah, blah, blah session. So, you know, you can you can just stop listening <laughs> if you want. The good stuff's over. Thank you, Carlos, for that. I mean, actually, we, him and I had some scheduling issues. Um, 
planning going to his show soon and to uh, share my stories and experiences with his audience but that's what it's all about it's really about making amazing things happen and sharing your experiences sharing your knowledge i'll be doing that in baguio i actually have a webinar today too with davide nicolucci one of our amazing previous guests and speakers at the cross-border summit and more so for me i said i would talk about it at the end of the show i'm at one percent battery life now I'm turning the dimness screen all the way down hopefully i can make it but yeah you know for me i like Peter, they reached out. I, thanks for listening. Thanks for your support. Coming to the events and the GFA VIP input and joining our calls. But yeah, I know I'm I'm down, man. I got my teeth cleaned. He asked. I did find a teeth cleaning. Actually, it's in the newest. I've moved like three times in one month in Manila. I mean, never not counting moving Chiang Mai to China to Thailand, the Philippines. When I was here, I moved three times. So. Uh, found a dentist in my apartment building. Can you believe it? On a third floor, an elevator pops open and I see a dentist office. I'm like, what? This is a residential building. I guess they got a couple commercial floors. I don't even know from the outside it exists. I don't know how they get customers, but I, I did a walk-in and got my teeth cleaned. But she says I don't have a cavity, or she says it's very, very, very small. It's like a level one, and it's my choice to get a drill, you know, get it or not. So I said, ah, I don't feel like getting a drilling today. So I have a minor cavity still. I never heard of a dentist that lets you keep your cavity, but this one's pretty awesome. And she says, just top on down, take the elevator down anytime you want. I'll just check out your teeth. Paid her a thousand peso, which is like 20 bucks and uh, got a little bit of cleaning and done. But I'm feeling a little bit better, Peter, and others. But yeah, this coronavirus, you know, it just... I left, it's been really crazy 2020, man. Like, seriously, I, I left China, I arrived in Manila, volcano explodes, and then after that, a virus is spreading everywhere. At the same time, I split from my family. I'm on mikesblog.com slash BBC, yeah, my personal blog. They let me in bed. Uh, I was on BBC Radio Live in the UK with my wife. They patched us both in, dialed us both in, put us on radio to ask us how it feels to be split up and... I'm watching WeChat videos of my kids, you know, and they're like quarantined in their apartment. It's, yeah, it's stressful as heck. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff where I'm super busy with Alpha Rock Capital. We're rebranding the studio here for, for just graphics and uh, just so much happening and working hard on this membership for Global From Asia. We have webinars. It's just been intense, you know, like intense. But like Peter said, I'm just going to work my butt off now so I, when I do spend time with my family I'll I'll just you know I love these podcasts I hope to always do this for the rest of my life but you know maybe some of the other work stuff or some of the other stuff hopefully my team is trained hopefully systems are in place um, and hopefully you guys are joining the membership and come to our uh, summits and our masterminds and stuff like that but alright this is 0% and it's flashing so I don't want to lose this recording uh, but yeah coronavirus has been a rock rocked me up man seriously and of course we don't know about inventories and i have a huge roundup globalmedia.com slash coronavirus hopefully it'll be online by the time this show is on where we're gonna have amazing input from industry experts and members in the community quotes pictures insights some jokes and more check it out there and i'm over and out next week we got a really great show too i mean so many amazing interviews thanks for uh guests sharing with us and uh over and out glow from asia episode i forgot the number but i don't want to lose this recording see you later bye bye to get more info about running an international business please visit our website at www.globalfromasia.com that's www.globalfromasia.com also be sure to subscribe to our itunes feed thanks for tuning in